Laos. Introduction Laos is the common name for members of over 3000 species of wingless insects of the order Philoptera, three of which are classified as human disease agents. They are obligate ectoparasites. Most lice are scavengers feeding on skin and other debris found on the host's body. But some species feed on sebaceous secretions and blood. Most are found only on specific type of animals and in some cases only to a particular part of the body. Some animals are known to host up to 15 different species although 1 to 3 is typical for mammals and 2 to 6 for birds. For example, in humans, different species of louse inhabitat the scalp and pubic hair. Lice generally cannot survive for long if removed from their host. A louse's colour varies from pale beige to dark grey. However, if feeding on blood, it may become considerably darker. Female lice are usually more common than the males. And some species are even known to be parthenogenetic. A louse's egg is commonly called a knit. Many lice attach their eggs to their host's hair with specialized saliva. Lice inhabiting birds, however, may simply leave their eggs in parts of the body inaccessible to preening, such as the interior of feather shafts. Living lice eggs tend to be pale white. Dead lice eggs are more yellow. Lice are exoterichotes, being born as a miniature versions of the adult, known as nymphs. The young molt three times before reaching the final adult form, usually within a month of hatching. Lice are optimal model organisms to study the ecology of contagious pathogens since their quantities, sex ratios, etc. are easier to quantify than those of other pathogens. The ecology of avian lice has been studied more intensively than the mammal lice. Let us now look at the classification. The order has traditionally been divided into two suborders. The sucking lice that is the Anoplura and the chewing lice that is the Malophagia. However, recent classifications suggest that the Malophagia are paraphyletic and four suborders are now recognized. They are Anoplura, sucking lice occurring on mammals exclusively. Rhychnopterina, parasites of elephants and warthogs. Isconostera, mostly avian chewing lice. However, one family parasitizes mammals. Amblycera, a primitive suborder of chewing lice widespread on birds. However, also live on South American and Australian mammals. It has been suggested that the order is contained by the Trochomophora suborder of Scopotera. Lice in humans Humans host three different kinds of lice. The head lice, the body lice and the pubic lice. Lice infestations can be controlled with lice combs and medicated shampoos or washes. Human lice and DNA discoveries Lice have been the subject of significant DNA research in the 2000s that led to discoveries on human evolution. For example, genetic evidence suggests that our human ancestor acquired pubic lice from gorillas approximately 3 to 4 million years ago. Additionally, the DNA differences between the head lice and body lice provide corroborating evidence that humans started losing body hair about 2 million years ago. The non-disease carrying head louse differs from the related disease carrying body louse 
in preferring to attach eggs to the scalp hair rather than the clothing. The two subspecies are morphologically almost identical but do not normally interbreed although they will do so in laboratory conditions. A much more distantly related species of hair clinging louse, the pubic or the crab louse also infests humans. It is visually different from the other two species and is much closer in appearance to the lice which infests other primates. Lice infestation of any part of the body is known as pediculosis. Head lice especially in children have been and still are subject to various eradication campaigns. Unlike body lice, head lice are not the vectors of any known diseases, except for rare secondary infections that result from scratching at bites. Head lice are harmless and they have been regarded by some as essentially a cosmetic rather than a medical problem. It has even been suggested that head lice infestations might be beneficial in helping to foster a natural immune response against lice which helps humans in defense against the far more dangerous body louse which is capable of transmission of dangerous diseases. Let us now look at the adult morphology. Like other insects of the suborder Annulopleura, adult head lice are small, usually 2.5 to 3 mm long dorsoventrally flattened and entirely wingless. The thoracic segments are fused but otherwise distinct from the head and abdomen and later being composed of seven visible segments. Head lies are grey in general but their precise colour varies according to the environment in which they were raised. After feeding, Consumed blood causes the louse body to take on a reddish colour. The head. One pair of antenna, each with five segments, protrude from the insect's head. Head lice also have one pair of eyes. Eyes are present in all species with the pediculidae, the family of which the head louse is a member, but are reduced or absent in most other members of the Annulopleura suborder. Like other members of the Annulopleura, head lice mouth parts are highly adapted for piercing skin and sucking blood. These mouth parts are retracted into the insect's head except during feeding. The thorax. Six legs project from the fused segments of the thorax. As is typical in Anopleura, these legs are short and terminate with a single claw and opposing thumb. Between its claw and thumb, the louse grasps the hair of its host. With their short legs and large claws, lice are well adapted to the clinging of the hair of the host. These adaptations leave them incapable of jumping on even walking efficiently on flat surfaces. Lice can climb up strands of hair very quickly, allowing them to move more quickly and reach another host. The abdomen. There are seven visible segments of the louse abdomen. The first six segments each have a pair of spiracles through which the insect breathes. The last segment contains the anus and the genita. Sex differences In male lice, the front two legs are slightly larger than the other four. This specialized pair of leg is used for holding the female during copulation. Males are slightly smaller than females and are characterized by pointed end of the abdomen and well-developed genital apparatus visible inside the abdomen. Females are characterized by two gonopods in the shape of a W at the end of their abdomen. Like most insects, head lice are oviparous. Females lay about 3 to 4 eggs per day. Louse eggs are attached near the base of a host hair shaft. Egg-laying behavior 
is temperature dependent and likely seeks to place the egg in a location that will be conducive to proper embryonic development which is in turn temperature dependent. In cool climates, eggs are generally laid within 3 to 5 millimeter of the scalp surface. In warm climates, the, especially in the tropics, eggs may be laid 6 inches or more down the hair shaft. To attach an egg, the adult female secretes a glue from her reproductive organ. This glue quickly hardens into a knit sheet that covers the hair shaft and large parts of the egg except for the operculum, a cap through which the embryo breathes. The glue was previously thought to be chitin based, but more recent studies have shown it to be made of proteins similar to hair keratin. Each egg is oval shaped in about 0.8 mm in length. They are bright, transparent, tan to coffee coloured so long as they contain an embryo but appear white after hatching. Typically, a hatching time of 6 to 9 days after oviposition is cited by many research authors. After hatching, the louse lymph leaves behind its egg shell, usually known as knit, still attached to the hair shaft. The empty egg shell remains in place until physically removed by abrasion or the host or until it slowly disintegrates, which may take 6 or more months. Let us now look at development and nymphs. The time required for head lice to complete their nymph development to the imago depends on the feeding conditions. A minimum 8 to 9 days is required for lice having continuous access to human host. This experimental condition is most representative of head lice conditions in the wild. Experimental conditions where the nymph has more limited access to blood produces more prolonged development ranging from 12 to 24 days. Nymph mortality in captivity is high, about 38%, especially within the first two days of life. In the wild, mortality may instead be highest in the third instar. Nymph hazards are also numerous. Failure to completely hatch from the egg is invariably fatal and may be dependent on the humidity of the egg's environment. Death during molting can also occur, although it is reported uncommon. During feeding, the nymph's gut can rupture, dispersing the host's blood throughout the insect. This results in death within a day or two. It is unclear if the high mortality recorded under experimental conditions is representative of the conditions in the wild. Let us now look at the reproduction of lice. Adult head lice reproduce sexually and copulation is necessary for the female to produce fertile eggs. Parthenogenesis, the production of viable offspring by virgin females does not occur in the pediculo humanis. Pairing can begin within the first 10 hours of adult life. After 24 hours, adult lice copulate frequently with mating occurring during any period of the night or day. Mating attachment frequently lasts for more than an hour. Young males can successfully pair with older females and vice versa. Lifespan and colony persistence. The number of children per family, the sharing of beds and closets, hair washing habits, local customs and social contact, health care in a particular area, which could be a school, and socio-economic status were found to be significant factors in head louse infestation. Girls are two to four times more frequently infested than boys. Children between 4 to 14 years of age are the most frequently infested group. Let us now study the behavior of lice feeding. 
all stages are blood feeders and bite the skin four to five times daily to feed. They inject saliva which contains an anticoagulant and they suck blood. The ingested blood is excreted as a dark red frass. Position on host. Although any part of the scalp may be colonized, lice favor the nape of the neck and the area behind the ears where the eggs are usually laid. Head lice are repelled by light and will move towards shadows or dark colored objects in their vicinity. Migration Lice have no wings or powerful legs for jumping. So, they move by using their claw-like legs to transfer from hair to hair. Normally, head lice infest a new host only by close contact between individuals making social contacts among children and parent, child interactions are more likely routes of infestation than shared combs, hats, brushes, towels, clothing, bed or closets. Head-to-head -head contact is by far the most common route of lice transmission. Treatment There are many chemical treatments available that aim to kill the louse. Another treatment is to use Controlled, heated air to effectively dehydrate the lice and their eggs. Applying a blow dryer with proper technique works just as well on eggs but not as well on hatched lice. After treatment, patients are often instructed to wash all bedding and vacuum all areas the head may have been such as car seats, coat hoods and sofas. But this is not always necessary since adult lice will die within two days without a blood meal and a newly hatched lice will die within minutes of hatching. Combs and brushes may be deloused in boiling water for 5 to 10 minutes. Let us now look at the body lice. The body louse is a louse that infests humans. Body louse is indistinguishable in appearance from the head louse but will interbreed only under laboratory conditions. In their natural state, they occupy different habitats. In particular, body lice have evolved to hatch their eggs to clothes, whereas head lice attach their eggs to the base of the hair. Nits are lice eggs. They are generally easy to see in seams of an infested person's clothing, particularly around the waistline, under armpits or even body hair. They are oval and usually yellow to white in colour. Body lice knits may take one to two weeks to hatch. A nymph is an immature louse that hatches from the knit, that is the egg. A nymph looks like an adult body louse but is smaller. Nymphs mature into adult about 9 to 12 days after hatching. To live, it must feed on blood. The adult body louse is about the size of a sesame seed, has six legs and is tan to greyish white. Females lay eggs. To live, lice must feed on blood. If separated from their host, lice die at room temperature. Let us now look at the pubic louse. The crab louse, also known as the pubic louse, is an insect that is an obligate ectoparasite of humans. It is typically found in pubic hair, but may also live on other areas with coarse hair including the eyelashes. They cannot jump and feed exclusively on blood. Humans are the only known hosts of this parasite, although a closely related species, Thirusogorillae, infects gorilla populations. The species passed to humans 3.3 million years ago. Description An adult crab louse is about 1.3 to 2 micrometers long slightly smaller than the body louse and the head louse 
and can be distinguished from those other species by its almost round body. Another distinguishing feature is that the back of two pairs of the legs of a crab louse are much thicker than the front legs and are equipped with large claws. Life Cycle The eggs of the crab louse are laid usually on the coarse hairs of the genital and the perianal regions of the human body. Crab lice may also be found on other areas of the body that have coarse and relatively sparse coverings of hair such as the beard, the moustache, the eyelashes underneath the arms. They do not generally occur on the finer hair of the scalp. The female lays about three eggs a day. The eggs take six to eight days to hatch and there are three nymphal stages which together take 10 to 17 days before the adult develops, making a total life cycle from egg to adult of 16 to 25 days. Adults live for up to 30 days. Crab lice feed exclusively on blood and take a blood meal 4 to 5 times daily. Infestation of Humans Infestations of crab lice are known as pediculosis pubis. Infestation of eyelashes is referred to as pediculosis ciliaris. The main symptom of infestation with crab lice is itching, usually in the pubic hair area resulting from hypersensitivity to louse saliva which can become stronger over two or more weeks following initial infestation. In some infestations, a characteristic grey-blue or a slate coloration appears at the feeding site which may last for days. Crab lice usually infect a new host only by close contact between individuals, usually through sexual intercourse. Adults are more frequently infested than children. Non-sexual transmission may occur among family and roommates through the use of shared towels, clothing, beds or closets. They can only survive a short time away from the warmth and humidity of human body. Mm -hmm.